morning and welcome to the free meeting house this is one of the historic properties uh, owned operated and maintained by the city of Moncton um, beautiful yellow Georgian revival style uh, sort of a New England style meeting house uh, at the corner of Stedman and Mountain Road uh, it has an associated graveyard that we'll talk about uh, in, in a bit um, but as you can see, this, this building is, is beautiful, has the right Georgian architecture and the, the beautiful windows, uh, the hipped roof, that kind of thing. What you don't see is anything that would tell you what religion this was. Meeting houses were generally civic kind of courthouses, things like that, or religious buildings. So this was built in 1821, and the population in Moncton at the time was so small, yet had so many different uh, religions, religious congregations, that none of them could afford their own church at the time. It was quite an expense. So a group of trustees got together and decided to make a free meeting house that any religion could use when necessary. And just about every religion in Moncton used this uh, for some time. Sometimes a day, sometimes months, sometimes years. And unfortunately, that also meant that the, the upkeep of this building would rise and fall depending on its occupancy over the years. So, uh, 1921, so it's 100th anniversary, a group called the Flat Iron Gang, a group of men from the area, got together and, and uh, sort of redid the grounds a little bit. So, we're coming up on 200 years for this building. So, this building really has cultural religious significance, architectural significance for the city of Moncton. Uh, really, really beautiful piece. We restored it uh, in the 1990s thanks to, uh, it, it was spearheaded by Lord Lloyd and Brenda Parsons. Um, and that that effort really got it uh, national historic st site status. Uh, a few years ago, I was involved in kind of major upkeep, uh, made some really, really good decisions, got some support from the provincial and federal governments. Uh, so a beautiful uh, meeting house, but I get to go inside, you do too. So we're going to go inside and then we'll talk about the graveyard as well. So now we're inside the free meeting house. Um, you see the uh, pulpit window. So it was for preaching, giving sermons and that kind of thing, but really um, not for a specific denomination, which is really cool. And all of the research that I've done, certainly in Canada, I don't know of another building that was specifically built from the onset as an omni-denominational um, place of worship. I, I just don't see that anywhere. So this quite possibly could be, in Canada at least, the only omni-denominational uh, uh, place of worship that was, that was built, uh, allowing any congregation to come in and, and use it. Um, you see these are called box pews. Pretty cool, nice high ceilings. So a box pew, um, a box pew, you would actually heat some, there used to be a stove in here, but it got pretty cold up on the top of this uh, little hill, um, this little berm that this sits on. So people would actually heat rocks and bring them with them. And that's why you have the box shape uh, or part of the reason, other than you can fit more people, um, so that the families could actually gather around and cluster uh, around heated rocks and such that they would bring with them. So different congregations did different things to this building. They sort of took ownership at the time. So when this was redone back in the, the uh, uh, 1990s, the first effort to really do a major back to the original restoration, this had regular pew orientation. So how did they know about this box pew? Box pews are pretty standard meeting house style of seating orientation. But they started to do some work, and here's the story. We have, I'm going to squat down here so you can see in this alleyway, this little door panel right here. The walls were actually wainscoted. So these were actually across all of the walls, sort of as a... Uh, 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 a, a, a detail along the bottom of all the walls. And when they started to remove these to do some research, and to, they found nail holes in weird places. So these weren't just nailed flat into the wall. They were finding some at angles, which led them to believe that these were actually 
put together in, in, in some sort of 90 degree shapes. Um, and then they started to strip back the painting on the floor and they saw marks that told them, oh goodness, those were actually box pews originally. And then they used these panels and they found that they fit exactly. So they, what actually happened is a congregation decided they didn't want box pews, took them apart, used the panels as wainscoting, and then built pews. So we actually have, as a template for the reconstruction, an original box pew that was actually wainscoting. So a little detail here as well of how this place is constructed. <clears throat> this is what the inside looks like <clears throat> of the wall. So large three quarter inch, one inch planks cut and pulled apart accordion style. So if you squish that, you would actually have a solid a solid plank. These aren't machine lathed anything. And then you have your plaster and horsehair squished through. Um, that's the construction of this, this building for, for the most part. The windows that you see when they did the restoration, they were replaced with sort of stained glass, different types of windows. These window panes are actually from the dismantled CN shops. They fit perfectly. They, that's where most of these windows came from when doing the renovations was the recovered CN shop windows. So you get an idea. We still have weddings here. This is a City of Moncton facility. We rent it out for different events. It is a National Historic Site, so you can't have flames or food or anything like that. But a lot of people get married here, and I think that's pretty, uh, pretty cool that in some ways it kind of retains that same function despite being a civic, uh, a civic building. Um, so that is kind of a rough inside look. Now we're going to head out to the graveyard. So welcome to the Free Meeting House Cemetery. Um, predates the Free Meeting House. Some of the, the er, I think the earliest one we've found is 1816. So this already existed uh, and probably had something to do with the choice of location for the Free Meeting House. So in proximity to, there's the Mukta Museum, Resurgo Place. So um, a couple of issues with this place. It used to be the entire property and we have evidence that there are sites, burial sites, over all of this property. The front of the building, the sides of the building, everywhere. Luckily, it was sort of landlocked by other properties, so uh, there are limitations, but in terms of digging or doing anything like that, any work that needs to be done here has to be done under the uh, eye of, a, of an archeologist, a registered archeologist. A Couple of issues we have about locating. Uh, three different reasons why we did some uh, um, ultrasound or um, ground penetrating radar uh, a few years ago is we know that there are interments here but we don't know exactly where three things one time this stone a lot of it is sandstone they fall down um, one fell down last year if I didn't mark it you wouldn't know where it is that's how quickly the ground reclaims so deterioration is one thing the second thing is when the Elmwood Cemetery opened in the 1850s, uh, it became sort of socially the place to have your, your plots. And uh, local lore says that some, you know, Uncle Joe's buried here, we want him with us at Elmwood. So they moved the stone, not the body. The third thing is in the 70s, uh, there was a beautification attempt and we have pictures in the 60s that show this. So prior to the 70s, where these stones are actually at a different orientation. So in an attempt to clean up and beautify, they actually turned and realigned the stones, um, not really considering that there are bodies underneath. So really these stones, we have no idea for the most part, whether they actually represent the people underneath or not for those three reasons. And that's why we did the, um, uh, we had the province of New Brunswick come in and, and do some research. And what it really told us, didn't say who was buried where, obviously they don't come with name tags. Um, but it basically told us this entire property uh, is, is uh, essentially a graveyard. Um, 
Coming up on uh, 2021, it'll be 200 years for the Free Meeting House. We just did a renovation a few years ago. The building's actually in great shape. So a community group has been brought together uh, to work on sort of evaluating what needs to be done in the graveyard. Um, do some fundraising to do any remediation that has to be done and perhaps some sort of an identifier um, monument or a cairn or something to um, sort of recognize that there are burials here that we know for sure but don't know anything about them. Um, so that's kind of upcoming so watch uh, for that and uh, just your little quick uh, bit of uh, trivia. There's a difference in English. In, in French, cimetière and cimetière, same thing. Um, graveyard and cemetery really i mean they're interchangeable right now but really uh originally a cemetery was not associated with a specific church geographically a graveyard was the yard where people were buried beside a church so a graveyard was associated geographically with a church a cemetery was an, a place of interments that was sort of on its own so there's a difference between a graveyard and a cemetery thanks for coming